In this chapter, we're going to talk about making specialized edits. We're going to step up from learning about the tools and actually apply them to certain kinds of edits. In this lesson, we're going to talk about cutaways. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up the Projects folder, and open up 0701 Cutaways. This project has two sequences, an interview sequence here and a little piano sequence. We're going to work on both of those. So your question might be, what the heck are cutaways? Cutaways are clips that literally cut away from one scene and go to another. You use them under a variety of circumstances. For instance, in this interview, we have this sound bite here, which is going along nicely. And then the cameraman, me, does a really clumsy zoom, awful zoom there, and you want to cover that up without losing the audio. So you cover that up with a cutaway. When you shoot interviews, you always shoot interview cutaways, and I'll explain what those are in a moment. Okay, you have that, and then you have these two sound bites put together. You got a sound bite here and a sound bite here. They're both nice sound bites. And look at how they look when I play them together. Here you go there, and boom, see your face kind of jump there? Kind of goes from there to there. And you don't want to just leave that in there. You want to cover up that edit with something to avoid having that kind of jump cut, as it's called. Watch that jump cut. Literally, it kind of jumps, and you don't want that in there. So we use cutaways to cover up a jump cut. We use cutaways to cover up like a clumsy zoom like that where we want to keep the audio. Those are a couple of reasons to use cutaways. You also use cutaways if you want to go from one scene to the next, and both shots are very similar. So you want to make sure your audience knows, look at we've gone someplace different. So you put a really obviously different shot, like a tight shot, between two wide shots. That's another use of cutaways, which we're not going to use in this particular lesson, but I just want to alert you to that. And then finally, we have this piano sequence over here, and we've got the <laughs> pianist playing here, and we shot her several times and tried to line up the notes such that her hands were in the right place, but sometimes the metronome in her head wasn't perfect, you know, and who has a perfect metronome in their head? And so the timing of her fingers were just a little bit off on that little shot right there. So we need to cover that up with something, and I shot a cutaway for this just to show you how that works. So we've got these three instances that we're going to work on here in this lesson. So let's go back to the interview sequence. I want to cover up this crummy looking zoom. Let's watch that awful zoom. So that you can chase them around the court and keep them on their toes. So Whoa, okay, well that's not good. We want to cover that up and then come back to the shot. So we want to lose this zoom. So we want the cutaway to start right about there. We want the end right about there and then come back to the shot. So that's our first order of business is to cover that up. They put the current time indicator to the beginning of that clumsy zoom right there, which is about, as you can see, 2004. And now we need to find something to cover that up. So I go back to the project panel. I want to switch over to the icon view and look at the interview shots. So I go to icon view. I want to open up this bin so I can see it inside the project panel. So I control double click on it rather than double click. Double click would open it up in a separate panel. I want to open it up here in this panel. So I control double click on it to open it up here. There we go. So here we got the wide shot, which is actually kind of a good way to start an interview. Lots of times you want to sort of set up an interview with a wide <laughs> shot like that. In this particular case, she actually has kind of a nice sound bite. But normally you would have a narrator talking here. She's talking about tennis we're here. Moving to get to the ball. But nevertheless, we're not worried about the sound bite here. We're just worried about this zoom here. So let's scroll down here and see what we got. Okay, another interview shot. Aha, but here come the cutaways. You got a hand shot, which can be used as a cutaway. A nice tight hand shot. Yet another hand shot. Here we've got a reverse cutaway of the interviewer listening to the interview E. Always a good thing for a cutaway. And a tight shot of the interviewer listening to the interview E. All those guys can be used as cutaways. So I want to use this shot here as our cutaway for the zoom. So let's go over here. The zoom starts right about there. Okay, remember around 20 or something. I'm going to open up this in the source monitor by double clicking it. Get a better look at it and get some in and out points here. What I need to do is I'm going to go from 2007 to. Right about there. So I need basically a two second and a few frames, like two second and ten frame segment to cover that up. So I need to go over here and I need to look at the beginning of the shot here. I'm looking at her hands there. So I need her hands to be separated over here so the beginnings of the shots match. So there her hands are separated. So I'm going to put an in point there by clicking on this mark in. So now we're ready to put it down there. I'm not worried about the length here yet. I'm just going to drag it down here then. Tighten up the length when I get it down here to the timeline or to the sequence. Now the issue is, if I drag this down to this track, we're going to do an overwrite. I'll show you. We just drag it down there and yee, we just covered up everything and lost the interview and now we've got a mess. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to go Control Command Z to undo that. What I want to do is I want to cover up the section 
without getting rid of the audio and without actually destroying the stuff down here. I can always get back to it later. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this video on this second track above this clip, which covers it up down there. This isn't truly compositing. Compositing is layering clips so you can see parts of each clip. Here we're not going to see parts of both clips. So we're going to see the clip on video two and not see the clip on video one. I also don't want to put the audio down here, so I have two tracks of audio. I want only one track of audio. I can drag this whole thing down to track two like that, and then the audio associated with this goes down to audio two, which is what it's supposed to do. The trouble is now I've got two tracks of audio. Don't want to do that. So I'm going to go Controller Command Z, don't do that. So what I want to do is bring just video down to this track. The way I do that is I grab this little icon here. This drags video only. This drags audio only, this drags video only. A really clever little feature. So I just drag this, I bring only video, and I bring it to track two, not down here to track one, but here to track two, where I'm just gonna cover up what's below it without actually overwriting it. And I want that to go just to the point where the zoom ends. And the zoom ended right around 22 something. So I'm gonna go to around 22 something like that. You can see the 23 seconds there now. I'm just gonna roll this guy back. I'm gonna trim this guy back. And now we've covered up that ugly zoom. Let's see how that works. Where the player is not. Mm -hmm. So that you can chase them around the court and get, keep them on their toes so that you can make a winning. So there you go. We covered up that zoom and we had their hands kind of more or less the same. Our hands are separated, their hands are separated there, so it works. And by the time this shot is over, we've zoomed in so the hands are no longer a factor. That worked pretty well, I think. You know? But we can also try it differently. We can try just her hands instead of the wide shot with our hands just to see how things work differently. I'm going to delete this, click on that and delete it. I'm going to try just their hands this time. So I want to, again, shoot for right around there. Let's go look at the hand shot here. We'll go look here, double click on this, go to some place where our hands are separated. Like right about there, something like that. That'll be our end point. Drag the video down to here right again, right there. Need to go only to about 22, 15 or so. Right around there. We'll bring this back. We'll trim this one back. So now instead of having a wide shot with our hands, we've got a tight shot of our hands. Like so. so that you can chase them around the court and get, keep them on their toes so that you can make a winning. Oh, that works too. See how that works? So we got to cover up this jump cut now. It's our next order of business where it goes from there to there. I kind of a little boop like that. And, you know, you might feel it's not such a big deal, but I think it's important to not have little jump so cuts like that. So we do that again with another cutaway. Let's try the reverse cutaway here of the interviewer. We did this one already, the wide shot. We'll use the tight shot this time. Just double click on that to bring it in the source monitor. We need to get just a couple seconds. We can put the clip right at the beginning, actually. And that's typically the way you do it. Either you put the clip so it ends at the edit point or begins at the edit point. That's usually my philosophy as opposed to straddling the edit point. So let's just look someplace where the interviewer is just kind of listening a little bit there. I like to paint stripes. There we go. Just looking. And the other one. So we'll do that. We'll just click on this little end point here. I'm going to drag that down to the edit point here. I can pull this thing out of the way. I'll bring it down to the other point. Just the video only. Right there. Whoops. I dragged it down by mistake. I pulled it down here by mistake. I'll try it again. There we go. Let's see what happens here. Possible. So the serve really starts with the toss. Cause my okay, now she kind of gave an expression there that you might not want there to have look like she's responding. So I'm going to trim that away a little bit to where she's done with that expression. Slide it over now. Try that again. Let's see how it works. So the serve really starts with the toss. Okay, now, and there was a phrase there. The serve starts with the toss. That's a comfortable moment to come back to the interview. So I'm sliding this over at that point. Now we've covered up that jump cut because the last frame here was the last frame of the clip and the first frame of the next clip, the jump cut, you can't see because this is covering that up. So let's see how that looks then. Possible. So the serve really starts with the toss because my tossing... There you go. So we've got those two guys covered up. We covered up the funny zoom and we covered up the jump cut there using just the video, not the audio portions of those two clips. So when you shoot interviews, keep in mind that you do want to get cutaways. You want to get cutaways of people's hands and also reverse cutaways of the interviewer, like so. There we go. Let's uh, go on to the next little clip, this piano sequence. Now this piano sequence sounds like this. Anyone who knows Debussy's Arabesque? You've heard that before. It's lovely. And what I've done is I shot this 
wide like this, and I got the audio from that, which runs down here. Just that one clip's audio runs here. And then I brought in this basically cutaway, in fact, this shot, the tight shot of the young lady playing the piano. And I covered up what was there before, or replaced what was there before. And then I got a tight shot of her hands here, and had that line up with the music like this. Now if you notice, if you're really, really paying attention, her little finger there hits the note, not quite in time with the music. Let's watch that. If you listen carefully, you can hear the bass note just a little bit after she depresses that key. And so to be precise, I want to cover up that shot and not show that little thing that's a little bit out of time, just because you know that metronome in our heads isn't always exactly right. So I'm going to back up to the point just before she depresses that key, by pressing the left arrow key. And I'm going to cover up that little spot where she just kind of doesn't quite match exactly how she played the piece the first time. So what do I cover it up with? I'm going to go back over here. I need to go up one level by clicking on this. I'm going to control double click on piano to keep this guy inside the project panel. There we go. I've got these shots, got the wide shot, got this medium shot here, got her face shot, which I could use, but I've already used it. Got this low shot right there that I'm going to cover up right now. And then I've got my fallback. I've got shots of the music. Here, this shot of the music has her hands, so that'd be really hard to get that right. If you hear the shot of the music, it's just a static shot. This is my fallback. Whenever I shoot something like music like this, where I might have the timing off, I always try to get a cutaway of the music itself to use in moments like this. So I'm going to double click here to bring it up in the source monitor. There we go. And I just need to take a couple of seconds here. Let's see, we are currently at 2320. I want to go to the end of this clip, so I press the down arrow key, 2320, and we're going to go to, oh, 2923. So six seconds worth of shot there. That's a pretty long shot, but we can do it. Let me go over here and make sure we've got six seconds worth of this thing, so I click on that. we got plenty of time, 10 seconds. So I'm going to drag just the video only over here. Let me go back to this point where she just is going to touch that bass key. So right there, back up a few frames with my left arrow key. There we go, now I'm going to cover that up. So I'm going to take video only from here, drag it down here, right there. And now I just need to move it over to the edit point, because I know that we're going back to this wide shot, which is actually the original shot. So we know that's going to be right on time, because that shot and that shot are the exact same thing. They're both the original Piano 1 shot. So I'm going to drag this fellow over to the left here, like so. And now we've covered up that small, minuscule mistiming, and we'll see how this works here. There we go. So that works out just fine. No one's the wiser that we just had a little, little bit of mistiming, and I've got this cutaway that I shot just in case something like this happens. And then I did a couple things here at the end that if you're paying attention, really looking closely, you might be wondering what those things are at the end. I'm going to zoom in a bit by pressing the plus key to show you. I put a little cross dissolve here to fade out the video and a cross fade to fade out the audio like this. Like that, just to kind of ease out because when I shot this, I didn't have her play the entire piece, just that little segment there so that I could use it as an example for cutaways plus some other things that I'm going to talk about down the road. So that, folks, is how you use cutaways. You use cutaways to deal with little problem areas for your editing. When shots are too similar, you've got some kind of awkward camera move, or you've got two sound bites put together where there's going to be an obvious little jump cut from one bite to the next.